Hello, my name is Stephen Thomas, and this is a video in my series about Azure Integration Services and Hybrid Options. In this video, we're going to talk about Azure Logic App Connectors. As we get started talking about connectors, let's first start by talking about triggers. Triggers are exactly what they sound like. They're essentially the entry point to a Logic App. You have triggers that start both consumption and standard edition logic apps. And when the trigger fires, it will run all the actions underneath the trigger if there is data found for that trigger. So it does exactly what it sounds like. Now there's a couple different types of triggers that we should know about. We have recurrence triggers, which is essentially a way to schedule a logic app to run on a set interval. We have polling triggers where the logic app will, at a periodic interval, go out and look for data to consume. So this could be like a SQL uh, trigger that calls out to a store procedure to look if new records are available, or like checking for new data in a service bus queue, something like that. Now, most polling triggers, we have the ability to adjust the time interval on that polling interval. So want to keep that in mind, especially if you're using consumption addition, because you are charged for each time that trigger does execute. So if you set it for like five seconds, there could be different cost impl implications as compared to setting it to five minutes, for example. Uh, there's also event-based triggers. These are triggers that happen in reacting to something that happens in the Azure environment. So you could set up an event trigger for data being added to a storage account, for example, or something like that. And the last type of trigger is going to be HTTP triggers. These are triggers that are going to be activated as response to an HTTP request starting off your Logic App. Now as we dive into connectors, let's talk about the two different main types of connectors. Inside each of these connectors, you do have a collection of triggers and actions. So each connector is essentially a component around triggers and actions for that connector. Now the two core types of connectors is going to be built-in connectors, and then we're going to have managed connectors. These are going to be Microsoft managed connectors that we talk about. Let's dive a little bit more into built-in connectors. So our built-in connectors are going to actually run in the runtime itself. So actually run with our workflow side by side. We used to have an option for built-in connectors for consumption logic apps, not anymore that ICE environment has went away. The only type of built-in connectors we have now are going to be the connectors for uh, standard edition logic apps. Those will allow us to uh, run side by side with our workflow, going to be a little bit more performant, allows us to take the standard edition logic apps anywhere we want. We can run it locally, run it in another cloud provider. And as long as we're using these built-in connectors, we're going to be okay because everything's going to run in process with that workflow. Now we have managed connectors. These are going to be Microsoft managed connectors. Um, the vast majority of connectors are going to be managed connectors. That means Microsoft takes care of everything for us. They do provide us an API endpoint that we interact with, authentication mechanism, and then Microsoft's going to take care of connecting to that backend third party for us, and kind of broker that communication for us. Uh, these are very similar to what we think of as adapters in BizTalk as where in BizTalk they were kind of full uh, managed devices. Now, you can still call managed connectors even if you're running standard edition logic, logic apps on premise. Uh, just make sure that you can still access uh, the internet so it can reach out and make those calls to that managed connector. Uh, now let's talk a little bit more about API connectors. So while we were talking about kind of connectors in general, Microsoft has implemented their connectors as what they call API connectors. And these API connectors are just essentially a wrapper around other APIs uh, for the most part. So you have a API connector around uh, ServiceNow, for example. So they've wrapped ServiceNow connectors around their own API connector, uh, API facade to kind of give you a consistent interface for interacting from your Microsoft Azure components to your third parties, uh, which is nice. Logic Apps and Power Platforms will share the same connectors for the most part. Uh, the same ecosystem of connectors is going to be available for both, which is good. There's hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of connectors out there. A lot of them will be in preview, uh, where they're going to be kind of subject to change, I guess, in the preview mode. 
You also have third-party connectors, which are uh, a little bit uh, beyond Microsoft Manage. They're going to be developed and maintained by a third party, uh, but they are still going to run uh, most part in the Azure data centers. And then you have some other connectors that are premium and enterprise-grade connectors. So your SAP connector, IBM connectors, some connectors like that, those are going to be considered premium, and they do have additional cost for those connectors. If they don't have a connector for an API you need to enter, interact with, you can create your own custom connectors, custom API connectors. Very easy to do, very straightforward. And what this does is it gives you, again, that consistent implementation path for that connector that you can then share across everyone in your enterprise working with uh, logic apps. They can all interact consistently. So think about that as, as your needs arise for those types of non-supported destinations. And you can get the full list of all the connectors here, constantly changing, ever-growing, a uh, very rich set of connectors available. Just to give you an idea, and just to give you an idea, here's a view from a couple months ago of all the connectors that were available. You're not supposed to be able to read this, just to give you an idea of that there is a lot of Microsoft provided connectors out there. Um, so it's a uh, very easy to interact quickly with uh, many of these uh, third parties. Okay, so let's dive in a little bit more. Uh, what about API connections? So what is an API connection? And we're gonna talk specifically uh, right now about Microsoft managed API connections. So basically an API connection, you can think of it as an instance of a connector. So you have like a SQL connector, for example, and then when you go to implement it, you're going to create an API connection of the type of that connector in the case of SQL. Um, then inside there, you're going to have your triggers and actions all related to SQL that you can use. So connections are going to be first class Azure artifacts which means they're going to be fully accessible through the portal. And while they feel like they belong to a logic app and they're generally created inside of a logic app, they very much are not a sole uh, property of that logic app. So they are first class, uh, first class Azure artifacts. They live at the resource group level. So again, they can be shared across many logic apps inside that resource group and they can be independently managed. So you can go into API connectors inside of the portal and make changes to these connectors independent of your logic apps. They also, as I mentioned, can be shared across logic apps. So you create a SQL connector in one consumption logic app. It can be used in multiple consumption logic apps as well. You can create them via PowerShell or via the designer. A lot of projects will create like a API co connector manager who's kind of responsible for seeing what connectors are going to use, creating the API connections for those connectors, and kind of maintaining them across the project. That's Otherwise, you can get into people are creating all kinds of connectors all over the place, and that could cause some issues. We can also, as I said, create a via PowerShell in most cases. There are, also, are some that basically have to be created in the designer due to the uh, authentication mechanisms that they use. So you have to view each connector it doesn't do very good about explaining you know the best way to create it or deploy it but a lot of stuff's online that'll help you out with deploying your uh, api uh, connections and as i mentioned uh, without having like a connection master on the project it's it's very easy to get into the scenario where you have many uh, api connections using the same connector uh, just because many different developers are creating their own uh, api connections so if you get in this you look through your Azure portal, you see connection one, two, three, then you know you probably have a problem. We need to have a little more managed control over uh, creating your API connections. And now we have API connections that live in app. These are ones that run inside your standard edition logic apps. Um, these are also going to be instances of our API connector, just like we saw with Microsoft Managed. And these are going to be scoped a little bit differently. So the Microsoft Managed, remember, are scoped to the resource group level. These are going to be scoped at the uh, standard edition logic app level. And remember, a standard edition logic app can have multiple workflows inside of that logic app. So you can have 10, 20, you know, maybe more workflows, and these would all share the same in-app connectors that are created at that core standard edition logic app level. And with that, inside of our uh, standard edition, we'll see that there's three different types of connectors that we'll see. We'll see our API connections. These are going to be our Microsoft managed. These will show up in our Azure portal under API connections. 
We're going to have our service provider connections. These are going to be our in-app connections. These are going to be things only that live at the standard edition logic app level. Then we're going to have our function connections, which is just like it sounds, connections to any functions that we're calling in Azure. So let's take a look at how we'd go about implementing this. Connectors and hosting are going to be a little different between consumption and standard edition. In consumption, you're going to have a search box. You can search for the type of connectors you're looking for, and then you'll get a set of triggers and actions that you can implement. Same is true with standard, except now you have the ability to, to uh, select the runtime. So this is, are you going to run in app, which is going to be um, in process? Are you going to be shared, which is going to be Microsoft managed? Are you going to have a custom, which is going to be one of your uh, custom third parties that you're going to create a custom connector. So with standard, you have a little bit more thought to, to put into this. Some things will be able to run both in process and Microsoft managed things like the service bus, for example. And there's also some limitations on whether you're running a stateful or stateless a standard edition logic app. Uh, you'll have a, the selection of connectors uh, will be a little bit different between the two. Um, all this information is kind of embedded in the Microsoft learning documentation when you do a search for connectors. It's, it'll list connector by connector and tell you kind of where it can run and whether it's Microsoft managed or can be run in process. So um, all that data is there. You just have to make sure to look it up per connector. Okay, so let's dive into a demo about working with API connections. Now let's jump over to the Azure portal. I've already logged in and pre-created a consumption-based logic app. In this logic app, I've just created a recurrence trigger. And now let's go ahead and add a connector. I'm going to go to a new step. And here we can see the available connectors to us. Now I mentioned that everything here is going to be Microsoft managed. There are in fact some built-in connectors. The built-in connectors here are going to be things like flow control and things that are core to running a workflow, some HTTP request response type of stuff. But in general, all your communication with the outside world to third parties is going to be done through Microsoft managed connectors. So for the purposes of this, I'm going to come back to for you going to go ahead here in the search and let's look for Outlook. And it'll take it just a moment. And here you can see the Office 365 connector. Let's go ahead and click this. And I want to go ahead and send an email. And send an email with options. I'm going to select this one. I'm going to sign in. And here's where I'm going to go about actually creating my instance of this connector going to go ahead and select an account. And you can see here it's pre-populated everything for me. It has my connection set up here. And I can go ahead and give it a two address. And it doesn't matter. And go ahead and save this logic app. We're just interested in looking at the API connections for now. So we won't actually do anything with this. So with that, I've created this connection. If I do want to change it, if I had more than one already in this resource group, I could click Change Connection. And here you would see all available uh, connections that were to Outlook that I could select here. I'm going to cancel this. We can come over here under API Connections. And here we can see our Office 365 connection that we have created. Now, I mentioned that these are Azure First Class Citizens. So under API Connections here, this lists all my API connections in my whole Azure subscription. I'm going to do a refresh. I'm going to go ahead and whittle this down to just this resource group. It's a live demo. Click apply. And here you can see that API connection that I created. And I can click on this. And I could go to properties, view some of the properties here. Now, if I wanted to make adjustments to this, I could click on edit API connections. And here I could edit this API connection. So if this was a SQL connection string, for example, I could edit that here. Things like database name, username, password, all that would be accessible here. I could reauthenticate if I wanted, and all that would be done right here. Now, this is at the resource group level. So if this API connection was used in multiple logic apps, I would be changing that connection properties for every logic app that consumes this API connection. So particularly if you're working with SQL Server databases, I've seen issues where developers will come in here, change a SQL Server database to point to their local database, for example, and then everybody in the whole resource group will now be pointing to their local database. So that's kind of another good reason why it's good to have um, one central resource that's 
available to manage and maintain these API uh, connections for you. Um, so with that, that kind of shows you quickly how to use this in a consumption-based logic app. So let's see what this looks like in standard edition. So I've now jumped over to a standard edition logic app, and I've just went ahead and pre-created two connections here for us. Let's click on the plus icon and see what our experience looks like here. I'm going to go add an action. And it's very similar to what we saw in consumption-based logic apps, except this time, as we saw in our slides, we have both in-app and shared, where I can select different types of runtime. Here, let's do a search for service bus. And as I mentioned, uh, you will sometimes see both in-app and Microsoft managed connectors here. So this in-app means it's going to run in process with your logic app. The one without the tag would be a Microsoft managed edition. Now there's different times you'd want to use one versus another. Uh, so it all kind of depends on where you're going to run and host your standard edition logic apps. So I've already pre-created two items here my insert row into a SQL Server database. This uh, again has my connection information here. This is going to be an in-app call. So this running in process and I have my send an email just like we saw before. This is going to be our Microsoft managed uh, connection here. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like. I'm going to go back to the root of my standard edition logic app. Remember they can have multiple workflows in that logic app and here under connections this is where I'll see my different types of connections that I've created for this for every workflow inside of the standard edition logic app. So I do have my Outlook connection here and my display name. Then under service provider connections, here are my in-app. Here are my in-app connectors that I've created. Now this API connection we see here, this will show up under my API connections under my resource group because this is going to be first class citizen to Azure running in that resource group. So this was a quick overview here of kind of how to uh, set up and use uh, connectors and API connections inside of your logic apps. And let's jump back to the slides. Now this concludes our video on API connectors inside of logic apps. If you want to learn more, you can always go to stephenwthomas.com slash learn, where I have links to this video and the others in this series. There's some Pluralsight training courses that I've created that are out there. A couple of these are a little bit dated, but all of the concepts are going to be relevant to anything you would work with in Logic Apps today, both standard edition and consumption. These were all written against consumption, but many of those concepts still apply to standard edition as well. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you.